yourself in this situation. You have a child, he or she is simply the love of your life, filling your heart with a feeling you've never had. <laughs> But as the months fly by, you notice that precious child is not developing as they should. There are no huge smiles, babbling, or really any social skills. So maybe the first thought that comes to your mind, could it be autism? Well, for a lot of families, it's not a situation that they have to imagine. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reports one in 68 children falls on the autism spectrum. That is a tenfold increase in 40 years. As far as who has the condition, study shows it's four to five times more common in little boys than girls. Autism Speaks reports one in every 42 boys has autism, one in 189 girls do. Considering all of these numbers, it should come as no surprise that autism is the fastest growing developmental disorder in the United States. But you know, just because a child may have autism doesn't mean they can't live a full and happy life. It may just take a little extra care in getting them to reach their full potential. The Benedictine School has specialized in educating children with special needs, including those with autism, for 56 years. And in today's Day in the Life, Sean Stryker stops by the school to find out what a typical day entails for one of their students. If you've ever driven through Ridgely, Maryland, you know it's a quaint town surrounded by farmland. What you may not know is it's also home to the Benedictine School, a sanctuary of sorts for those who are differently abled. The Benedictine School is a pretty special place. We serve students and adults uh, with developmental disabilities, uh, autism, and multiple disabilities. But the school didn't start that way. In 1887, it was originally opened as a monastery for the Benedictine Sisters. Shortly thereafter, the Sisters started the St. Gertrude's Academy, a school for girls. It wasn't until almost 70 years later that the Sisters started the school on the path it remains following today. The Sisters uh, saw that need and began serving students in 1959. And this was far before it was the in thing to do, far before any laws or regulations uh, indicated that it was something that needed to happen. In their first year, the school had a total of four students, all boys, all with Down syndrome. Julie Hickey, the director of education, says yeah. they have grown quite a bit since then. Today, they serve 64 students, eight living off campus in group homes, 52 living on campus in specialized dorms with around the clock care, and four day students. Christian is one of those day students. Hickey says his educational needs were not being met in a traditional school setting. So three years ago, he started attending the Benedictine School, where his teacher, Stephanie Franklin, says he began to thrive. Christian has come such a long way. When he came, he was a shy 15-year-old um, boy, and he really didn't talk much, and he only wanted attention from adults. And through socializing with his peers and opportunities to work in and out of the classroom, Christian has blossomed into a wonderful young man who now can carry on conversations with adults and peers. I had the opportunity to hang out with Christian for the day, and it quickly became clear that he loves this school. It's a wonderful school, wonderful people here. We like family, basically the whole school is like family. Christian's day with his school family starts when he arrives at 8.30. After checking in with his teacher, he and a few classmates head down the hall to do the morning announcements. Hallowed be thy name. From there, it's time for a little exercise. So wellness is really important to us here, so students can be outside, inside, start their day with a fitness walk uh, under the guidance of our adaptive physical education instructor. After their morning workout, the students split up and head in a variety of directions, including physical, speech, occupational, or even to aqua therapy. As for Christian, it's off to the Healthy Way Cafe. So Healthy Way Cafe is, is a, a partially an academic program and partially a vocational program. A program that includes life skills from learning how to make lunch to being able to greet someone and take direction. And the Healthy Way Cafe offers the perfect opportunity for students to learn important life lessons like counting out change. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Healthy Way Cafe. Can I help you? Well, one bag of chips, please. 35 cents. Students will work on their academic skills instead of uh, maybe doing a math worksheet in the classroom. They're going to work on real math in the Healthy Way Cafe by uh, counting out change for the customers 
or counting out you know, how many sodas they need for the day. From there, it's back to the classroom for a more traditional type of schooling, including lessons on the smart board or a worksheet. This year, Christian is working on math, reading, and has even began writing stories. We started working with him on the computer um, because our world is technology and he is writing stories and then able to save, use spell checker, and then add clip art to it. Um, so we're teaching him the process of writing a complete story to the best of his ability and then going back over it, editing it, and then printing it out and sharing it with his peers. Yes, and which is something we would have never been able to get out of Christian two years ago. <laughs> the Benedictine School also believes in taking their students out into the community, which is not only fun, but also educational. Sometimes they are close to home and sometimes they are maybe an hour or so away in Ocean City for a senior trip. And we like to take local trips here in our town of Ridgely to teach our children about safety signs. Um, walking streets, going in and out of stores because this is the community they are in for the time being so they should know how to navigate through that and things we teach them here they will be able to take with them wherever they go after Benedictine. Stephanie says seeing her students make that connection between the classroom and the real world makes it all worth it. It's your aha moment, it's your rejuvenation as to why you do this. As for Christian, he enjoys connecting with his teachers and his peers. The whole thing, when I come here, it's all about connecting with all your friends. I feel like family to you. It's like connecting with family, but you're connecting with friends all the time. Isn't that great? Now, as you can probably imagine, it costs a lot of money to run a school like that. As a matter of fact, the Benedictine School has an annual operating budget of $23 million. Now, the school does quite a bit of fundraising to help with things like tuition assistance and special equipment, as well as programs that aren't covered under the regular education funding. As a matter of fact, this Sunday is one of the school's biggest fundraisers, the 14th annual Chrome City Ride. These are some pictures uh, from last year's event. All motorcycles, hot rods, and classic cars are invited to attend. Here's the details you need to know. Sunday, July 26th, an escorted ride from different registration locations. It's only $25 per rider, which includes a t-shirt and lunch. And we will have all of the registration locations and times on our website, WBOC.com. Just click on our picture there at the top of the page. Sounds like a lot of fun. That's sound like a lot mm -hmm. of fun. Now, raising a special needs child by Christian comes with its challenges. And someone who knows firsthand is Kathy Snyder. We first met Kathy on the show when she came on to talk about her son, Austin. Austin is 18 and falls on the autism spectrum. Kathy talked about the challenges most days bring. It's a day-to-day -day challenge. There's one day could be a great day. Yeah. The next day could not be so great. And it starts first thing in the morning. And just knowing that it's gonna be okay because there's mornings where I just break down. Don't know if I can go through with this. Don't know if I can continue. You know, how am I gonna get through the day? How am I gonna help him get through the day? And Kathy went on to say that her faith and knowing that everything is going to be okay, gets her through the day. Yeah. Now it's those challenging days though that have prompted another mother who has a son on the autism spectrum to do something about it. For most people, something as simple as getting dressed it's a cinch. It takes, what, maybe two or three minutes to put on your clothes. But for children who have autism, it can be an ordeal. Just trying to figure out which way clothes go can be quite a challenge. Taking up a big chunk of a child's morning. That's why Lauren Therry created Independence Day Clothing. It's an error-proof fashion line, meaning any way a child puts on an article of clothing <laughs> is right. There's no such thing as backwards or inside out. There's no buttons, there's no zippers, tags, or laces. The fabric is very smooth to support those with autism who have sensory issues. The clothes also have an optional GPS tracker embedded into them just in case a child wanders off or gets lost. And as far as how they look, Lauren says the clothes that she designs are more than just sweatpants and t-shirts. She says just because her child has special needs doesn't mean he shouldn't be able to look just like everyone else. What a great idea. Yeah. And you know, you mentioned sens sensory sensitivity. Right. Another one of the sensitivities children with autism may experience could be smell. Mm -hmm. And a new study from Israel suggests the way children with autism process smell could be key to detecting the disorder. The study finds that children with autism spectrum disorder don't adjust their nasal breathing when they smell either very pleasant or very unpleasant odors. According to the study, 
Typical children take bigger sniffs if they smell something sweet, and they limit them when they smell something rotten. The findings suggest smell tests might be a way to help diagnose a disorder at a very early age. Wow. Mm -hmm. It is amazing to me how researchers can make connections like that and possibly lead the way to a medical breakthrough. Still ahead on Delmarva Life, one doctor is trying to find the connection between our advanced medical system and the high number of chronic diseases that we're seeing these days. And she thinks she may have found it. Find out why she also thinks it starts with looking inside the body before there are signs of trouble. Maybe you're having trouble sleeping because your partner is incessantly snoring. We also look at a few of the major causes of snoring and three ways you can make it stop tonight. Mm -hmm. Delmarva Life will be back in just a few moments.